and enjoy and, and just lift up the Lord on tonight. Amen. 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 We're going to lead you into prayer. I'm going to lead you into prayer. And after prayer, you'll be in the hands of the praise and worship team. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we stand before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we come to here tonight, Father God. First, we want to give you thanks, Father God. First, allowing us to get up this morning, Father God, to visit you on this day, to, to just glorify you on this day, Heavenly Father, to magnify you, to lift you up, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for ordering our footsteps on today, Father God, keeping us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We just say thank you, Father God. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your comforting, Heavenly Father. Father God, we just thank you for everything. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us, Father God. Thank you for everything that you're doing here at the Bread of Life, Father God. We pray right now for a special anointing, Heavenly Father, over our pastor. We pray next that you will anoint him, Heavenly Father, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Heavenly Father. Anoint his tongue for when he speak, Father God, he will speak boldly, Father God. Your word will go out for go forward, Father God. Your word will touch each and every individual that's here, Father God. Father God, we just say thank you right now, Father God. We pray for your people, Father God. We pray for that you will touch their minds, touch their hearts, Heavenly Father. If you find anything that isn't of you, Father God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will cleanse them, Father God. Purify their mind, their body, and their soul, Father God. Father God, we pray next that you will bless the ones that are on their way over here, Father God. Father God, guide them over here safely, Father God. Father God, we just say thank you right now as we come together just to magnify your holy, righteous, and majestic name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And now you're in the hands of the praise and worship team. Let's give them a hand clap of love. Holy is the name of the Lord. Let's do it together. Put your hands together right now. Come on. Join in with us. Let's celebrate the name of Jesus. Here we go. Holy, holy, holy.
Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is his name. Let's exalt him and lift him up on tonight. And let's magnify him on tonight. Because he is holy. Because he is worthy. Because he is worthy. I said because he is worthy. Let's because he's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He is a holy God. He is the only God. He is a true God. He is the one and only living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to exalt him and raise him up on tonight. Amen. Amen. Hey, don't you love that name? Jesus. Jesus is his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. You may be seated at this time if you can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Now we're going to have our welcome coming from Deacon Maurice Lassen. Let's give him a hand clap of love as he come forward. Good evening. To all of our first-time visitors and returning guests, on behalf of our awesome pastor and first lady and the entire Bread of Life family, we welcome you to our ministry where you will feast spiritually on the Bread of Life, which is Food for Champions. This is our year of manifestation, and we are in pursuit of the greater things that God has for us. Therefore, we will not be stagnant, nor will we be stuck, nor will we be stopped from moving into greater. As well, at this church, we are committed to the overall mission, which is to find souls, win souls, and make them disciples of Jesus Christ. While you are our guest, it is our prayer that something is said or done to minister to you to enhance your spiritual walk with Christ. Bread of Life members, help me say this to our guests. You are in a church where the word of God is taught, the love of God is evident, the spirit of God is directed, and the power of God is manifested to his glory. Thank you for being our guest, and remember, you are always welcome at the Bread of Life. May help me welcome our guests online and in person with a hand clap of love. Well, good evening and God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Power Mill experience where we're here to praise him and lift him up. And so we honor each of you, all of God's people, honor the spirit of Christ. And we want to take a moment now to do a little bit of housekeeping. If I could uh, ask you, if you haven't already, take your mobile device. Let's share this live service right now. I want to be a blessing to others who uh, may not be in the room yet, but if you show them something they're coming to, I believe they'll, con they'll join us in the house. I do want to celebrate you, Bread of Life, on so many levels. On Sunday, we were able to celebrate such an impactful and magnificent Friends and Family Day where we took the time uh, to evangelize, share Jesus without fear, and we were able to bring souls into um, to the house of the Lord. And in doing so, uh, I'm proud to say that Six people joined the church and seven people gave their lives to the Lord. Would you help me celebrate that? That is so awesome. And I want us to stay right there in that vein. Let me say a few things as it relates to that because there's much um, that we need to do in the aftermath. And I want you to think your, your job is done just because you had a few uh, people to come. I don't want you to think your job is done just because uh, they, uh, they may not have shown up, but there's uh, aftermath work to do that I want you to invest in. Number one, I want you to follow up with your guests, uh, whether they were present or not. If they weren't present, invite them to be with you uh, again in our next service. Uh, if they were present, thank them for coming and being a part of our worship experience and invite them to come back to be with you again. 
Now, the reason why I want you to do that is because our soul winning efforts are not over. They've, they've just begun, they've just begun. And so much so that the second part of the initiative uh, picks up in the weeks to come from now until May the 23rd. If you have someone to connect and join and uh, become a part of this fold, uh, they will uh, be helping you in many ways. Uh, I believe God will smile on you because you've won a soul into the kingdom. And then two, uh, you'll be able to be a part of our uh, secondary drawing that'll come up uh, at the end of May. So keep that in mind. That's the drawing that I, I'll be sewing into and blessing someone with $523 because uh, you were diligent in your service to the Lord. And so I'm just finding ways to be a blessing. There's no magic to it, nothing sp uh, really spectacular about it, except for when you sow seeds, a harvest comes up. And so that's what we're doing there. And I uh, just want to incentivize you. And then on Sunday, we'll announce our winners. It looks like I'm going to have to create some categories because y'all just went above and beyond. So I'm going to have to uh, do some add to it. So that's going to cost me a little bit more, but I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. So uh, be on standby for Sunday for our winner uh, from what? efforts we contributed to Sunday, but remember the soul winning efforts are not over. They've just begun. So you can get busy between now and the 25th, the 23rd of May and uh, have people to connect and join and visit and all that good stuff. And you can still be a part in some way, shape, form or fashion. All right. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Super Bowl fellowship. Uh, Super Bowl is coming up on the 12th and uh, I don't know, is your team in the Super Bowl? Let me just check. Anybody? Okay. Well, maybe not. Uh, but I want you to know we're going to come together in a special fellowship. The whole family is invited. The whole family is invited. Our men of distinction will be sponsoring this, and a lot of our men come out and celebrate, uh, but many of our women, and it's open to children as well to be a part. We ask that. Uh, you bring a store-bought food item and drink. A store-bought, we want you to grab something from Publix, uh, Piggly Wiggly. Uh, one man told me it's not Piggly Wiggly, it's Hoggly Woggly. <laughs> and so, Winn-Dixie, wherever you shop, Aldi, uh, we want you to bring something from the store. You don't have to go and cook your favorite dish, but grab something from the store. And um, we ask that you please sign up in the foyer what dish you're going to bring, what dish you're going to bring. Every household is that asked to bring at least one dish, and Bread of Life is going to handle uh, some of the main courses, and we'll make sure that that's there, the typical food that you eat at these kind of functions. So keep that in mind. That's for Super Bowl, Super Bowl on the 12th of this month, and everyone is invited. Uh, marriage ministry, we're doing some wonderful things. We're having our Valentine's Touch of Love event. It's going to be dynamic. I'm really excited about this, and I would that every married and engaged couple. We renamed this ministry some time ago because of the fact that we have some engaged couples that have yet to become married, but uh, the goal as a pastor is to prepare them for marriage in a way that they can uh, find wholesome fellowship. And so it's also open to uh, engaged uh, couples as well. Um, First Lady got me coming so I can learn how to just massage her in all the right places. And so I'm going to take those techniques home. But knowing her, she'll be asleep before I finish. <laughs> so she knows how to get her rest. Uh, so uh, join us. It's $40 a couple. Uh, their dinner is involved, and uh, you can text the word love to the number on the screen, or you can see uh, Sister Sue Jane after church. She'll be down here on the floor with First Lady or uh, Minister Tanya. Also, we're having our crew ministry events on the 12th. Uh, while we're, some of us are watching the Super Bowl, they'll be coming together for 
uh, their sweets and treats, uh, decorating uh, class. It's going to be nice. Minister K is here. Will you stand? Please see this beautiful lady. She'll take uh, your reservations, uh, get signed up, and they're going to be partnering with our culinary ministry uh, to do some wonderful things with the young people. This is ages potty trained to seven. And then on the 18th, the older young people are headed to the Honda Battle of the Bands. That's going to be exciting. It's $30 per person. And that same young lady that just stood up is the person you need to see, or you can text the uh, information on the screen. We'll be honoring Black History this month as well. Uh, I mean, really, they gave us a whole month. We need several years, actually. Uh, to s fully celebrate it, um, but I tell you, it's going to be wonderful, and uh, we're going to be asking you to wear uh, the attire that represents your culture, so not just black history, but we're honoring uh, all cultures, but uh, if you'd like to uh, dress up that day, you're welcome to do that. Lastly, the thing I want to share with you, I'm very excited because this past Sunday we had uh, seven people to receive salvation and the Sunday before that just as many people receive salvation so we were right on track we were right on track we were right on track in doing the will of the Lord and our next baptism is February the 26th this is going to be the first baptism of the year we typically have it on fifth Sundays typically have it on fifth Sundays but um, we moved it to February the 26th so that uh, if you have been recently saved, if you've been uh, um, never baptized before, or you'd like to rededicate your life, you can do that um, by signing up for this course. That's a uh, course that you need to take right before it, but I want to make sure that you know that we do want to obey the scriptures and that says repent and then be baptized and we want to do that with you it's a symbol to the world baptism does not save you it's just a symbol to the world that you've been placed on the side of righteousness and so to that end uh, I want you to get signed up see Minister Sonia uh, for baptism and uh, Minister Kay I want to make sure all those young people that recently got saved that they get in that course as well with Minister Sonia. Uh, to that end, I would that you would grab seed now. Let's all move together in a concerted way and honor the Lord in our giving. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. When we honor the Lord in our giving, it is a sign and a testament of his goodness, of his mercy, of his constancy in our lives. And so, I would that you would just raise your hand if you need an envelope to sow your tithe, to sow your first fruit. Uh, don't forget, and I hope everybody's already done this, be sure to give God a raise if you haven't. In your, in your uh, offering in particular, give God a raise in your offering. I've done that. I've upped my giving on Wednesdays. I've upped my giving on Sunday. And I've locked it in for this new year. And so I would that you would do the same. And let's bless the Lord. Our young people will be up front with blue buckets if you'd like to sow into our youth ministry uh, with any change that you might have. And then the rest of the giving will go in the brown buckets. Let's give at this time. <laughs>
that God did work a miracle just for me. And it's going to be stand with me and we're getting ready to sow into the kingdom and as the psalmist has already said it's going to be big even in our finances we declare that in our provision that God is going to continue to do big and great things in our lives let us pray Holy Spirit we love you we thank you for all the wonderful things you've done and tonight as we sow it is a signal and a sign to you of what's in our heart we tied that tenth of our gross because we know there will be no gross if there was no God. <laughs> we understand that completely. Uh, we're not giving our tithe and offering. We're returning it back to you for trusting us with so many great things. And so tonight, receive it. Let it be pleasing in your sight. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Will you turn to the right? Follow the directions of our ushers at this time. Come on. I believe it's my season. I believe. you to pray over these prayer requests and list of gratitude and all the various things from the, the uh, consecration then I ask you to pray and bring to the altar that you had spread over the altar several days and uh, in the month of January in particular those last few days and this will be the closing prayer and then I'll do the other assignment that the Lord asked me to do with these. Uh, but I want you to know that in this church, we believe in prayer. We, 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 
we are, I believe, a powerful church because we're a praying church. Uh, prayer changes things, changes situations, it changes circumstance. And I just want to encourage somebody, don't give up on what you've been praying about. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Prayer is it's a necessary tool. And sometimes God is not changing it in prayer. He's changing you in prayer. And so that's why you want to remain committed to it. Because the Bible says now to you and I that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And then you, you'll be able to say it's going to be big. <laughs> Point your hand towards this direction. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you right now for every prayer request, for everyone that has invested in this moment, for every um, act of faith, for uh, the stroking of the pen. Uh, was you actually etching it in their lives that it will come to pass? Everything that is in your will, that it be upon them, that that it be manifested that whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. God, we say it's already done. It's already manifested. It already has come to pass. In Jesus' name, every heart said amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You can do better than that. Thank you. Grab your sword. I want to jump into the word of truth. If you would join me in the book of Exodus, and then we'll slide over to Samuel, 2 Samuel. And I want to pick up where I left off, if I may. Elder Donald, let me have one of my chairs, please. Um, in Exodus 25, and we're going to begin at verse 12. It's right over here. Exodus 25, and I want to begin at verse 12. Lord's just been dealing with me about this passage and I begin to think about how unaddressed error can actually cause you to lose your life. Right. Amen. And thank you. And uh, if you don't remember, you uh, but don't 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 miss Adam and Eve. Uh, there was some error that they allowed to go forth and didn't address. Now, we won't be talking about them, but I wanted you to just have a quick point of reference uh, that that error can have some far-reaching ramifications if it goes unaddressed. Exodus chapter 25, verse 12. We're going to try to deal with just, just a little bit more. And the word of God says, and thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it. Are you there? And put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side. Verse 13, and thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, or rather poles of, of wood, and overlay them with what? Gold. And and thou shalt put the poles, the staves, into the rings by the side of the ark, and that the ark may be born with them. Born with them. Or in other words, as I shared with you uh, on last week, that the chest of God, the ark of God, would be lifted up on their shoulders for them to carry it. They were indeed supposed to carry the presence of God. Okay. Verse 15. 
and the staves shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. What did the Bible just say? And they shall not be taken from it. In other words, the staves are supposed to stay. They're supposed to stay. And more than understanding that the, the, the poles were supposed to be there and remain there, I want you to understand the purpose of the poles. And uh, they, they, they were as an indication from God that I want you to remain attached. I want you to remain attached. I'm, I'm making it available for you to remain attached. It, it, it is your job, dearly beloved, every believer, it is your job, not his, for you to stay attached. <laughs> Did you get that? That's important. And because, see, I know life gets hard. Matter of fact, we just came through one of the hardest years we've ever had. And I know situations arise, but the Lord told me to tell you stay attached to the ark. Stay attached. Look at somebody say, stay attached. Don't let nobody, don't let nothing turn you around. Stay attached to the ark. Now let's go to 2 Samuel real quick. 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. I just want to walk through the holy pages for just a minute. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And I want to begin at verse 1. There's nothing really fancy here, but I, there's some things that I want to extract. Um, verse 1 of 2 Samuel 6 chapter. And here's the word of the Lord. Again, David gathered together all those men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah, a place of praise, to bring up from thence the ark of God. That's that same ark they were dealing with, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. Verse 3, and they set the ark of God upon, listen to this, a new cart. They, they, they set it upon a new cart. And, and I, I told you last week that this was a big mistake. Big mistake. Because you and I just read in Exodus how God wanted it to be carried. But they set it upon a new cart, some, somebody that knew better than God, somebody that wanted to do it their own way. They set it upon a new cart. Do me a favor and look at somebody and tell them, follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 follow the instructions. Ver, ver, verse 3, verse 3. Verse 3, and they set the ark upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was with Gibeah and Uzziah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. They drove the new cart around. They drove the cart around. They drove around the presence of God instead of carrying it. They were succeeding in their efforts they, 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 they changed and, and started doing things their own way, and they were succeeding for a while. Oh, my Lord, for, for a moment. And, and let me tell you, just because it's successful doesn't mean God is in it. Mm -hmm. The Bible reminds us that even the wicked will succeed for a while, but they will soon be cut off. There, there is some success, don't miss this, that will pull you away, away from the presence of God. Because the truth is, and some of you have learned this, me and you, Sharon, we've learned that uh, success without God is not success at all. Do I have a few witnesses in here? 
there is some success that you'll you'll be deep in it and 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 but yet it's causing you to be on the surface with God. This this is not success at all. Verse four. Uh, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, accompanying it, not carrying it. And Ohio went before the ark. Verse 5, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on the harps and on the psalteries and on the timbrels and on the cornets and on the cymbals. Man, they had a whole band, a whole crew. It was Ray Chu and the crew. They were getting it. And, and let, me, let, me, let me say this for those of you that love the word and that will talk back to me. They had the sound of church down pat. They had the surface stuff down pack and and they were successful at doing it for a while catch them for a little while they were uh, successful and 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 some of you can receive this and honor God when I say it and and and, and but but some people are moved by a sound but they're not moved by God <laughs> because if you're not careful what you're successful in can move God right out of the way you got to be careful. You got to be careful because we're making good noise. We know all the routine. We know all the surface stuff. But do you know the God behind all of it? I told you this last week, and I want to tell you again. God is tired of competing with our success. Okay. Our success, if we're not careful, can replace the Savior. <laughs> we don't have a reason to depend on him because we worship our success more than we worship him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and so I want, I, want, I want to make sure that you understand you can't keep succeeding and not surrender. Somebody say surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. See, you, you, there, there, at some point in time, there must be a place of surrender in your life where you say, Lord, not my will, but thine will be done. I can't stay there. Verse 5, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord. I told you they had all the right sound. They had all the right surface stuff. They had success and, and all, the Bible says, all manner of instruments made of Fir wood, harps, psalteries, timbrels, cornets, and cymbals. But now, verse 6. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, as I put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Here's where I needed to get to. Verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled upon Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. I want to talk to you tonight again from this thought. Carry it correctly. Carry it correctly. As a subtopic we used last week is he let me live he let me live now I want to explain this because many of us don't understand because there's not enough Bible study going on many churches have cut out Bible study and they just don't do it at all and I believe it's to the detriment of the body of Christ because we we're, we're professional church goers but we're ignorant Um, we, we, we don't know much about, but about the Bible that we come to, to, to learn of. And uh, this passage is about, about the ark of God, the very presence of God. The, the, the ark, the Bible says in one passage, the chess box of God 
which is a symbol that God gives man to help him understand how to handle his presence. How to handle his presence. Because in his presence, I want you to write these three things down. In his presence, there is power. In his presence, there is protection. In his presence, there is provision. In his presence, I'll give it to you again, there is power, there is protection, and there is provision. Now, if you're going to carry this presence, carry this ark, carry the very power, protection, and provision of God, the first thing you must understand, which I began and gave you on last, or week before last, I should say, is the duty of death. The duty of death. The duty of death. Well, that's to be extracted from the fact that Uzzah, he died by the ark. There was a death that took place. And for many years, as I shared with you last week, um, we, we've, we've bypassed this part and we jump down to the last verses where David danced. But we forget that there was a death before he danced something happened that was very significant and while the dancing represents many things like celebration uh, it also represents the fact that sometimes we're not changing because we were dancing before then and we're still dancing now but nothing has died okay and so it's Im important uh, the the question you need to ask yourself is as long as I've been a Christian, am I a better Christian now than I was last year? Am I better? Am I better? Ask yourself, say self, are you better? That's a good question to ask. And it's okay to answer yourself in, in this scenario. <laughs> All right, because uh, it's important because um, it, when you begin to see this, there's a lot of things that I want you, that intrigue me in this text. And uh, I, I, I thought about that God killed someone for touching him. Wow. He killed somebody for, for touching him. Uh, and and, and I, uh, I thought, shoot, God, don't you want it to be touched? I thought, I thought that was the first thing that came to my mind. And maybe what God is showing us, for those of you that are hungry for revelation, is you can't touch me until you worship me. That, 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 that's why the church is a place and should be a place where God should be adored. God should be magnified. Come on here, believers. God should be worshipped. He should be worshipped. And, and it will change things in the rest of our lives when we take time to truly worship him. We don't come to church and we don't worship God for entertainment. We don't do it to be amused, care. We don't do it. We, we don't do it for theatrics. We don't do it. This is not a social club. No, 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 no. This is a place of worship where God is to be adored and lifted because in worship, the old us dies. But it's a car that they didn't get that. So, so the, the old us must die so the new us can live. So worship is, 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 is really a means of having a funeral so the old us can never get any more glory in our lives. That's good right there. He, he, uh, as I touched it and died, the, the man doesn't die from a heart attack. He doesn't die from HIV or diabetes. The, the man dies from touching God because touching God without first dying to flesh first means that now you done got into self. Worship says there is nothing about me that is worthy of touching you. Did y'all get that? There is nothing about me. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy enough. There is nothing good enough about me. It's a privilege for me to be in your presence. 
let me go a little deeper. I can't touch him with my flesh. I can only touch him with my hallelujah. I wish I had somebody. I can only touch him with a thank you, Jesus. Ain't nobody got a thank you, Jesus, in here. I can only touch him with a glory to God. I can only touch him with, Lord, I bless your name. And, Lord, you're wonderful. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're mighty. I would somebody would take a moment right now and just touch him with your worship. What am I trying to teach you? I'm trying to teach you is flesh cannot worship him. So you must crucify flesh to get into his presence. You got to crucify flesh. Flesh must be crucified. This is the duty of death because it is in the duty, in this duty, that we appreciate the fact, I hope somebody will catch this, that he let us live. He let us live. I'm sorry I'm boring you. But I'm going to go a little deeper. Have you noticed that these little babies around here, especially ethnic children, <laughs> children of color, they come out of the womb and in less than a few months, they start moving to the music. <laughs> come on, y'all. Y'all seen those babies. They move to the sound. <laughs> And they can become very successful at this. They don't even know what's being said. They just move into to the beat. And, and they learn how to successfully move to the sound even, watch this, before they learn word. <sighs> Y'all didn't catch that. Went over your head. See, babies, uh, for those of you that are with me, you'll understand this. They, they will successfully move to the sound and the music even when they got poop in their diaper. <laughs> oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Let me give you the second duty. The second duty is the duty of dealing with the diaper. <laughs> the duty of dealing with the diaper. That's what I want to talk about for a minute. Defecation in the diaper. I call it defecation so I, keep, I can keep from calling it something else. <laughs> Y'all got it? Because too many of God's people, we are successful with many things. The sound, we're successful with the surface, we're successful, and we're successful still with poop in our diaper. Let me go here. We're showing up for worship just to leave ignoring a lot of things that need to be changed. <laughs> Y'all don't want to have this kind of church. This is different. This is different. The baby is dancing. The baby is getting his groove on. The baby is moving to the groove. The baby is succeeding and recognizing the sound, but we have not dealt with the diaper. Because it's your child, you say, it's cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. She's so cute. And everybody else around him is saying, I smell something. <laughs> See, here's the problem. Sometimes we can love something so much that you don't want to offend them by telling them they need to change. Oh, y'all not talking to me tonight. You're not talking to me tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, 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 and, and, and I, and I want to help somebody. I want to help somebody. And I, I know you want to help somebody. And so do me a favor and, and find somebody behind you and tell them it's time to change. Tell them it's time to change. Oh, y'all said that loud. Y'all said that strong. Y'all said that because it's easy to help others. It's easy to help everybody else. It's, it's easy to recognize somebody else's smell. But, 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 but will you do me a favor and tell yourself? Say self. Tell self what self needs to know. 
you need to change. First lady said, I stink. <laughs> See, the funny thing is diapers are supposed to benefit us. They're supposed to benefit. But the diaper cannot benefit the baby if you leave it on after it's full. Y'all with me? The only way the diaper is helpful is you've got to change it. You've got to change it. Di diapers are supposed to assist the baby. But when you start smelling it, you've got to change it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't change it, it leads to problems. It leads to problems. And, and let me go here, and I want to go ahead and share this. Never let something that was supposed to assist you assassinate you. Somebody say you got to change it. If you don't change it, that thing will assassinate you. That thing will kill you. It will take you out of here. Where are the people that don't mind being transparent? There's some things you had to change before it took you Took you out of here. We could be successful if we would be realistic about what we need to change. I thought about it. Sometimes the right sound, the right music can be very spellbound. It can be very powerful. Where are y'all that love music? Just, uh, just, okay, okay. I can tell how y'all be singing during the praise and worship. <laughs> Y'all take over the song, don't know all the words, <laughs> singing out of key. That's all good. We invite that. We want that. We want that. They don't mind that at all. But the spellbounding power of music can make you forget you got something you need to clean up. The, the sound of music can be so powerful that it can make you be in the car with somebody you're not even attracted to. But the right music come on. And it'll make you both start looking at each other differently. <laughs> Y'all not going to be honest in here. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you. <laughs> See, because if the right music come on, you, you'll only assess the surface. And you'll only look at the, 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 the moment and, and the, 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 the success in the moment and just to find out that their diaper is still full. Talking about that's my jam. Just to get yourself in a jam. See, we've been in a consecration, y'all. And in consecration, listen to this. Consecration is about shedding the sound. Consecration is about shedding the success. Consecration is about getting deeper than it, the surface, surface, and it's saying, Lord, I want you to show me me. Oh, see, that's different. We like to show out, but we don't like the Lord to show us us. What about you needs to change so you can address the smell? Because if you're not careful, that smell will be the result of something getting sticky. Y'all ain't hear me in here. If you let what's smelling stay there long enough, it'll leave a stain. Oh, I wish y'all would talk to me. Because see, the smell, it affects your interaction with others. This, this, is, this is heavy. Uh, uh, it, when, it, when something is sticky, you, you take it in the seasons it shouldn't have been taken into. In the places it should not have gone. It's, 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 it, it leaves a stain because it's been there so long that when you try to remove it, it's still like it's there. It, it's, it's a stain, it's a stain, it's, it's sticky, it's got, a, it's got a smell 
chew it. I got to climb out of that, y'all. Y'all don't like that kind of talking. Let me get out of there. All of us did was touch God, and then God killed him. All he did. And I will give you this, and, and we'll get to the good part, but because uh, y'all didn't like that challenge stuff. But I thought to myself, I said, Lord, what, what made God kill him? only want 20 of you that can get this uh, true, true, true worshipers that can get this when the Lord showed to me and, and, and that's this God would not let the scripture say that a man kept him from falling <laughs> oh, I wish y'all caught that hit me like a ton of bricks God, God had to do something because he wouldn't uh, 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 allow it to be that it looked like man was saving God. Okay. 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 Y'all better get this word tonight. I want it delivered to you the way he gave me. Don't get it twisted. Don't ever get beside yourself. Don't ever miss the fact that, 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 that there is ever an instance where man is saving God. I want us to get this out there that somebody that can receive it, God does the saving. <laughs> There's never an instance where, where I saved God or whether I made God look good or I brought God out. He always does the saving. He saved me from my sins. He saved me from my stuff. He saved me from suicide. He saved me from a, 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 a end of destruction. He saved me from stuff that I can't even tell you about because you would look at me differently if I told you what he really saved me from. But God always does the saving. Do me a favor and point at somebody tell them he's a saving God. As a matter of fact, if you look at me, I am a living witness that he saved me. One day he looked beyond my faults. I wish I had 10 people in here. And he saw my very need. And I just need 10 people, not everybody. But you're glad that one day he reached way down and he picks you up and he turns you around can I get five more people that say he saved me he saved me he saved me you got to get that in your spirit he saved me I didn't save him he did the saving What God is doing with some of us, and he's, he's trying to kill the part of us that thinks we're doing him a favor. <laughs> Y'all don't want to have that kind of church. Do you believe that there are Christians that think they're doing God a favor when they put that little tenth in the bucket? Oh, help me here. When, when, when they do that, that little thing where they come here and wave their hands for an hour and a half, two hours, and give God some glory, they, they think they're doing God a favor. But no, baby, you ain't doing God no favor if it had not been. Come on here, somebody. For the Lord, I need somebody that knows you ain't doing God no favor. Every time you lift your hands, you ought to lift them 10,000 more times. Every time you open your mouth, you ought to say thank you, Jesus, 10,000 more times. Because if I had 10,000 hands, I couldn't thank him enough. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. When I give him glory, I'm just doing my reasonable service. Tell somebody you ain't doing them no favor. Doing them no favor. You can sing real good. You ain't doing them no favor. You can preach real good. You ain't doing God no favor. <laughs> you must understand that when we do consecration, consecration is about saving you. 
Your talent ain't saving God. Shoot, God got 10,000 more that he can use. Matter of fact, he used a whale. He used a donkey. He used a raven. He said, even if you don't want to praise me, I'll cause the rocks to cry out. I'll cause the birds to sing. I got 10,000 species of birds that sing to me every morning. They, they bless me every morning. So if you don't open your mouth, if you don't come to church, if you don't do what you think you're supposed to do, God got somebody that will say, I will. I feel the Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord at all times and his praises. Does anybody got that kind of praise in here that say I'll bless him if don't nobody else give him glory, if don't nobody else lift him up, if don't nobody magnify his name. God you got one somebody that's appreciative of what you have done in my life and I just need somebody that is saved to open your mouth and shout in here one time and say thank you Lord God don't need the saving you do God doesn't need the saving I do God doesn't need the saving we do we need the saving The duty of changing this diaper is important because too often we neglect what God has required of us because we think we're doing God a favor. But God says, before I let it look like you rescued me, Before it, it, it looks like and it appears like you, you, you brought me out, I'll remove you all together. Oh, you better tell somebody, tell them don't mess around and get removed. Uh, uh, tell them like this, this is the new age culture. Tell them don't mess around and get canceled. Uh, we approach God, okay, Lord, like we... We rescue in him. <laughs> so what I want you to see, Missionary Teresa, is it was human reaction to try to catch the ark. Get that, Jackie? It was human. It was like a reflex. But we must understand the duty of deliverance is God's. the duty of deliverance. You just work on getting your diaper clean. <laughs> get, get, get your diaper clean. And, and, and don't let people fool you. Just because they've been in church a long time don't mean they don't have a dirty diaper. Uh -huh. Just because they're anointed when they stand up. Don't, don't mean that diaper ain't full. <laughs> Deliverance is God's duty. Write this. Dedication is your duty. Dedication is your duty. I'm almost there. Dedication is your duty. The next thing I want to share with you as I close for those of you that are eating this meal tonight, you would have never had to attempt to catch God if you would have carried him like he told you <laughs> in the first place. Brother Adderhall, they missed that. They missed that. He, he gave the instructions back in Exodus. That, 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 but had you done what he told you to do, you wouldn't have been in this predicament. The last thing I want to give you is the duty of following detailed directions. The duty of following 
detailed directions. When God, when God, when God, when, when God told them how to maneuver his presence, when he told them how to move the ark, how he wanted them to transport him, he gave them specific instructions. In Exodus, he says, Thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the size of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. Or in other words, it will be lifted up by them and they would carry the presence of God. Hmm. But instead, they did something different. Instead, Essentially, they put God in a wheelchair. Because they didn't want the responsibility. Oh, y'all get me. They didn't want the responsibility of carrying him. <laughs> but, but, but I'm going to be responsible, and I hope 30 of you will get this and talk back to me and no matter what. But, but God told them to carry him because you're supposed to feel the weight of carrying God. <laughs> just, just tell somebody who might be a little sleepy, tell them you're supposed to feel it. Tell, you, you're supposed to feel it. But instead, they made God look handicapped. Good God Almighty. But I want you to know, there is nothing handicapped about our God. <laughs> because if God is in a wheelchair, uh, 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 we can manage him differently. Uh, uh, matter of fact, let me just show it to you. Let me show it to you because y'all y'all looking at me like that. And like, I don't know what he's talking about. But I can show you better than I can tell you. <clears throat> I recruited some um, heavy weight lifters. These boys in the gym on a regular, on a regular. Whenever they're not at church, they at the restaurant. <laughs> they thought I was gonna say the gym. <laughs> they, <laughs> but they're carrying the chest of God, carrying the weight of God. And they were supposed to move with it. Just carry them, him into their lives, into their work, into their play, into every situation, into their marriage. When dealing with those children, they were supposed to carry him. They were supposed to carry him. They, I, I, instead of carrying titles, they were supposed to carry the weight. Oh, Lord. And, and, and instead of carrying, y'all stay with me, they were supposed to do so many other things. But instead, one of them got a bright idea. be right back. Instead of carrying the weight, the Bible says, and then they, they put.
put it on a car. Look at it. Thank you, man. He talking about praise the Lord. And he gave up carrying the weight. A sigh of relief when we don't have to do the God thing. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to have this kind of church. The weight of God has been made to be handicapped. Because as long as our God is handicapped, we got an excuse to be handicapped. As, 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 as long as he handicapped. So life is going on over here. Yeah. And we figure out how to be successful without carrying him. And we'll just, Jesus, you stay right here. And stay there until I come back to get you. Oh, y'all clapping and smiling now. But how many times have we put Jesus in a corner? We no longer carry him. It's the weight. Let me help. Y'all help me with this. If you go into the gym and you go there 364 days and take one day off, but the only thing you did was look at the weight. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Help me now. You're going to look the same way you did. You talk about, oh, they got a nice bench press over there. <laughs> they got a nice treadmill. Nice. Oh, that's the best elliptical I have ever seen. And you keep observing the weight and not carrying the weight. You would never be built to what you're supposed to become because you didn't follow the instructions. What kind of Christian should you be right now? I'm so leery about giving people titles these days. Once I give them the title, they do less work. Oh, let me help you. It happens other places too. You get married and you want to do less than what you did. Before you got married. No, baby. The way you spell marriage is W-O-R-K. <laughs> Y'all thought it started with an M, did you? You spell it as work. So we rescue God. We put him in a wheelchair. And we went over here about our business. And we wonder why, come here, Elder Donna, for a minute, that when the devil come, we can't stand and we whimper at him. Because when we should have been over here putting in some work on the weights, when we get into a real fight, we can't handle. I'm trying to caution you to get back under the weight of his glory. <laughs> Carry this thing. You, you ought to fast sometime and it ain't got nothing to do with pastor calling a fast. Thank you. You, you ought to pray sometimes and you, you did the Tuesday night prayer call and you did a Thursday night on your own. Y'all well, getting quiet in here now. The weight of God will make you live right. 
Will somebody talk in here if this is not a dead church? The weight of God will make you shut your mouth when you're trying to say the wrong thing. The weight of God will keep you from making that booty call. Can we say that in here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell y'all pastor y'all talking like that. Too late. Deontay edit that out. Too. Oh, never mind. Just let it stay. So, y'all know my heart. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm trying to carry this weight. I'm trying to deliver you this message in such a way that you, you, you get back under this weight. Stay attached to it. And then we run back to God when we need to make ourselves look good. Yeah, yeah. We, that's how we do them when, 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 we, when we get into enough trouble over here. Oh, we come back uh, running and pretending like we've been in the gym. But over here doesn't tell me whether you've been in the gym. It's over there. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in here? Baby, this over here will let you know that I got to stay under this on a regular basis. God, in you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. I'm not going to put you in a place that you're handicapped in my life. There's one scripture, Mr. Skinner used to love the scripture. He says, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. That you are powerful enough to limit the power of God in your life. Because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He ain't going to put the weight on you unless you're saying, Lord, put the weight on me. He ain't going to put it on you and say, Lord, endow me with more. He's not going to put it on you until you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I need somebody to get this in your spirit. You got to humble yourself and come up under this weight. And it's the weight that's going to build you. It's the weight that's going to make you. I want to get some people in here that can tell me you're stronger because you got up under the weight. You're a little bit wiser because you got up under the weight. You can take some stuff that you didn't even know. You can take because you got up under the weight of God. So now, watch this, somebody. I'm looking for a giant because the giant just don't know. I've been up in Planet Fitness. I've been up in the gym. I've been up in goals. And I've been up under this weight. And the weight will make you understand. I want to show you something. Let me take you to John. I'm going to close right here. Take, go to John. Y'all check in on uh, Elder Mac and Mr. Chris at the end of service. Make sure they didn't hurt themselves. Yeah. They look young, but I want to show you something. Go, go to John. Go to John. I want to say it's John 12. Yeah, go there. John 12. Let me get there. And 32. Because they, they put God on a scooter. They put a God in a posture that made him look disabled. Your life ought to always make God look like he's able. <laughs> Hebrew boy said, even if he don't do it, <laughs> I know he's able. Yeah, yeah. They, they put God in, 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 in a posture that said, God, you're too heavy for me. But I want you to know there's some value in the weight. 
write that, type that. There's value in the weight. Because there, there's something about carrying the weight of God that's valuable. And it's valuable to you if you learn how to carry it. In, in John 12 and 32, he says, and I, if I, <laughs> okay, Minister G gonna go with me. And I, if I be, <laughs> be lifted up, help me here, Holy Ghost, upon the earth, he said, I'll draw. I wish somebody, let me just pause right there. Whoever's quoting these scriptures, you're getting ready to get a miracle because God said he'll do the drawing. Whatever you need in your life, if you lift him, he'll draw. <laughs> Whatever you need him to do in your life, if you lift him, he'll draw. You ain't got to cut no corners to get no man. You ain't got to cut no corners to get your blessing. You ain't got to cut no corners to get what God has for you. And I, if I be lifted, if you lift him, he'll do the drawing. Why are you lifting him? He, he didn't give you money. He didn't give you honey. He didn't give you a house. But one thing he did is he let me live. Oh, that's enough reason to lift him right there. I should have been dead. I should have been lost. It should have been over. But some way, somehow, he looked beyond my fault. When I lifted him up, he lifted the burden. When I lifted him up, he lifted the heavy burden. When I lifted him up, he lifted the problem. And I just want to know, am I by myself? Did he lift anything for you? When you lifted him up, somebody take 30 seconds and give our God a high and lifted up praise in this place. Somebody shout. I'll be lifted. How draw. How draw. I'll bring it to you. If you lift me up, everybody stand. Does your life reflect that you are carrying it correctly? Soft music. Or is your God in a wheelchair is your helper handicapped because you want to stay handicapped or can God put some weight on you some weight so he can grow you some weight so he can change you one of the reasons why a baby cries because the diaper needs change. When it gets heavy enough, <laughs> it'll make them reach out for change. Hallelujah. I wonder if there's anybody in here that's reaching out for change. Somebody say, change me, oh God. Oh, come on, say it out of your heart. Change. Let me handle this weight, Lord. Not like I used to. But, but let me get my reps in. Let me get my reps in. Let me get my, my reps in because I, I want to build something different this year. I want to build something different. I want to I wanna be stronger than I was when that temptation showed up the last time. God, I pray a covering over your people right now that they will get up under your weight. I pray right now 
that when they feel the pressure, they won't run. I want to pray right now for an anointing to lift more than you've ever lifted before. Oh, come on, somebody go ahead and push that weight up right now. Woo, say, lay it on me, Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to be able to lift that family because they lifted you. Ha, ah, God. They're going to be able to lift that situation because they lifted you. That addiction, that issue, that stronghold cannot stay because they, they lifted you. So we lift our hands to the God that is the lifter. Woo! Mm. God, we even repent. Yeah, yeah, we repent because we, we didn't carry it correctly. Oh, come on, I wish somebody would just be, uh-uh, we, we didn't do it. We skipped out on some stuff. We, we hopped guys. We... We play, uh, made it easy, but God, we repent, we repent, we repent. I need you to say it. We repent, we repent, we repent for not following your instructions, for taking the easy way, for performing and not pressing. We skipped out on tithe when it got hard. We skipped out on coming to church when, 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 when the right thing was on TV. We skipped out. Yeah. But help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. God, we've repented before you. Now I ask you for grace. Woo! I didn't deserve it, but I, I'm asking you for your grace. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to leave and do it differently this time. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to I'm going to commit back to my prayer time. I'm going to commit back to Wednesday night Bible study. I'm going to I'm going to do it differently, Lord. I'm 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 going to stop slipping out on my wife. I'm going to stop slipping out on my husband. I'm 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 going to be a better single. I'm going to keep my pants zipped. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do, Lord. Cuz I'm getting up under the weight and your weight will change how long I have to wait. <laughs> God, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, give the Lord a glorious hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. I hope you've gotten something out of the word of God tonight. I'm, I'm trying to feed you full meals where you, you can't wait to get here on Sunday because you realize that God has something for you even midweek that it gives you the strength to carry the weight for your journey. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you.